got Jules down today, he's come down to pick up some bait and there's a chance to catch up with him since he's retired actually. <laughs> retired, he's still got here that long. I know, yeah, yeah. retired, bloody hell Kev, I should be retired before you, but you'll never retire, will you? No, no. No, no. Bloody hell. But well, then my job's fishing rather than dealing with urchins in courts. <laughs> I know, God, I can't believe it. I was this young kid in, um, in fishing all those years ago. I mean, we go back to the 80s. And believe it or not, we go back to the 80s as a consultant to the 90s, but it goes back to the 80s, mate. Really? Is it that long? So it's 90s? That's 1988. 30, that's 30 years. Wow, wow. 30 years. Um, all started, mate, of course, as a, as, a, as a carp handler. You know, you grow up. I grew up in the Hutchinson, Maddox, Little era and the Nash era. And you'd see this guy called Kevin Nash. Now, you'll have to remind me the time span. When did you used to go to conferences with that big dog of yours? Was it Carl? Carl, oh, no, that was um, Carl Select conferences, wasn't it? Yeah, so that would be the late 80s. I'm just trying to think when I bought him. I think I reckon I bought him when he was 84. Yeah. When 84, bought him. I remember, I remember yeah. obviously... You're the only uh, dog member of the Carp Society. <laughs> I can't believe it. Because obviously you, you hear these names as a kid and you read about people in the magazines and you don't ever want to approach them. You know, they are... It's a bit different nowadays, but in those days you never went anywhere near Hutchinson or Kevin Maddox or Kevin Nash. And all of a sudden I saw this bloke with this big dog and somebody said, that's bloody Nashy. And that was, that was my first introduction to you. I didn't go anywhere near, anywhere near you. Number one for the dog and number two, your bark was probably better than Carnes. Carnes was a softie, wasn't he? He was a softie though, yeah. So that's where, that's where our initial um, meetings came. And I remember I got a letter, because in those days everything was via letters. No, no, there wasn't even email. We, we didn't really use emails in those days. It didn't exist. Didn't, probably didn't exist in our day, Kevin. It existed. I can, so I, I can remember when we got our first computers in the offices. And I think that was, that was the end of the 80s, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I, re I remember getting a letter from you from Kevin Nash. Yeah, that's because I was watching you catching some bloody good fish. Yeah. The big ones in the motorway, didn't you? Yeah, um, that's where the first one came because I, I remember just get, I'd caught the motorway's first 30, which would be about, I think it was 1992. And a 30 pounder in 1992 was a good fish. And I'd done well. And then I got a letter from Kevin Nash, from Kevin Nash, not Kevin Nash as in the business, from Kevin Nash saying, congratulations, um, would you be interested in joining Diawa? And I guess nowadays most people have, well, how would Kevin Nash be involved with Diawa? Basically, I was consulting, wasn't I? Um, what happened there, I went to, there was a Northern Ireland show. Um, I'm not reluctant to tell the story because I've actually just told it. Uh, um, and John Middleton, the sales director of Darwin, came yeah. over, um, just wanted to check on something, and that was they was talking to Rod Hutchison to become their consultant. Yeah. And he said, I know you've got some form of connection with Rod. I said, yeah, I've got 50% uh, interest in catching uh, the business. Yeah. And he said, well, would that be a problem? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely, it will be a problem. Rod can't sign up for Darwin you know, when, you know, when he's uh, got catching. Yeah. And in his next breath, he said, well, would you? Which kind of took me aback. And I thought, well, Nash don't do rods. I couldn't afford to do rods, yeah. frankly. So I kind of saw it as an opportunity to help um, spread the name of Nash, you know, via Darwin and all their catalogues. So I signed up, and as you know, um, their rods needed sorting out. And I set to sort the rods out, and the rest, as I say, is history. Out there come the amorphous. The AKNs, yeah. wasn't it, yeah? The AKNs, and then I spotted uh, the SS Reels in a Japanese catalogue and they're dead more over, and that started the big pit revolution, you know, with big, big pit spools. I remember the adverts, Kev, because the adverts were really impressive in those days. There was a picture of the SS3000, the AKN, and if I remember rightly, there was a picture of Stevie Olcott, probably a Harefield fish, Sean Harrison, probably a Patzel Park fish, and you, and that's when I first saw Diawa were involved in carp fishing, which they weren't previously. Not really, they were, they were just a small player. They were like a Shakespeare. They had a bit of carp fishing, but not what I would call serious carp fishing, until you came on board. Yes, right. I mean, so they had a range of carp rods, but everyone used to say how super slim they were. Well, yeah. That's because they was like one and a half pound test curves. Yeah, they were like, one of my mates had got one of them. It was like a chewing gum. Yeah. You would cast and you'd get a, a four minute wobble afterwards, like a bit of chewing gum. So what I really did was sort the test curves out, you know, and say, 
Angus wouldn't understand in those days, if you remember Jules, it yeah. was short, medium range rods, oh, yeah, or yeah. long range rods, so you used to carry two sets of rods. Two sets of rods, yeah. And where the amorphous uh, made history, it's the first multi-distance rod, you know, and that's, that's why it's such a big success. Yeah, it was incredible, Kev, uh, you know, people might not, well, people would get it nowadays. Imagine if Alan Blair wrote a personal letter to you. Imagine if Terry Hearn wrote a personal letter to you. I've still got the letters. When the letter came from you inviting me to be part of Cart Team Diawa, it was incredible. And I, I mean, obviously, I took it up straight away. But it's I have to... Taken, you know, I'm listening to it, it's almost taken me a massive effort to get my head around it. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm just an ordinary guy catching yeah. his car. Yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't, I think, until someone sat me down in the late 90s uh, and explain, you know, you're seen by many as a hero. Yeah, you know, of course. You know, so you know, so I, I don't, I still don't deal well with it. You know, like I say, I treat one like I treat yourself. I'm just an ordinary guy. But I, what I wasn't recognising is that to many, I was their hero. Absolutely. And so I had to start. Behaving like one. Behaving like Yeah, yeah. You know, even though, as I said, I found it hard. Yeah. You know, you know, so if someone really looks up to you, then you have to behave in a certain way. You know? And I remember, Kevin, that you, you might not remember this, but I certainly remember it. I remember getting an invite to come and stay at your house. Now, could you imagine if David Beckham, as a footballer, because it was like you were my David Beckham, said, yeah, pop by and see me in Victoria. I remember driving down. Now, in those days, I had 500 pound banger cars and all the way from Yorkshire down to see you in Essex was a hell of a way. And I remember I just got, got there and I remember um, I landed and I think, I think your wife's name was Sue. Yeah, number three. Sue, so, Kev. Sue, so number three. Okay, we'll come. No, so I remember she cooked me a lovely meal. I remember you had a Porsche with, with a flat tyre in the garden. I thought, this guy's got a Porsche in the back garden with a flat tyre. And you said, no, I prefer to drive a truck. And I thought, because you sort of think, you, you know, all oh, these your heroes have these flash cars, but you were always, I might have a Porsche to go up and down, but my everyday thing was your truck. Yeah, the Porsche, you know, was a little part of my life, right? which, yeah. I don't regret, you know, get the trappings, but you know, I just realised it wasn't me. You no. Know, so, you know, so the reason it sat me, it actually sat in my driveway for two years. Until yeah. I sold with it. a flat tire, thought, yeah, what's this doing? I sold it, it wasn't me, but I went through it. But I'll tell you, I've never told you this, I'll, I'll tell you what I remember about that. Now, this was winter. Yeah. What I remember is no socks. Yeah. That <laughs> You had no socks on, and like what? You know, this, this bloke's walking around with no socks on. I was Essex before Essex, mate. Yeah, he was Essex before Essex. <laughs> and what I do remember is, and this is really important, was work ethic, and you and Tim Paisley impressed me with this. I got down to your house, we stayed, it was late when we went to bed, and it was like five o'clock in the morning, I got a knock on my door, right Jules, we're going into work. Yeah. What? What? You were like going into work at like five, mm -hmm. six o'clock in the morning, thinking, uh, but Kev, you on the firm. Why aren't we going in at nine o'clock after a full breakfast? Still going to work now. And you, yeah, you still going to work now. And what impressed me was that at five o'clock in the morning, or half past five, by six o'clock, we were in your original office. Hmm. Was that Rayleigh? I can't yeah. remember your original office. And it was. People have this idea that the MD, the this this were these corporate offices. There was stuff everywhere, magazines. A bit, but, like, yeah, a bit like here now, there was stuff everywhere, and it's not what people expect. But I remember thinking, and it was great, the work ethic of you and the guys was, as an individual looking, I thought, whoa, whoa, this isn't just about me catching a few fish, writing a few articles. If the bloke at the top has got this strong work ethic, I'm going to have to work at least as hard as him. I remember that early on. As a change, George, I always say it's like the pub joint, work, working for Nash Tackle, you know, it's 24-7. Yeah. You, you live it, sleep it. You know, the whole lot. You know, you've, got to be, it's about, you've got to be passionate to work for Nash. You know, Absolutely. Work. I've noticed that. And I think the thing as well, Kev, is um, when I was with Dow, we were all together with Dow, but there came a time at one time, I think, when, in effect, although you were the de facto head of Cart Team Dow, we didn't call it Cart Team Dow, but I think at one stage, um, I think uh, the old friend, the Sensatron, raised its head. And I think, um, I think Nash Tackle and um, Dow, I think you had to step down from, from Dow, didn't you? Well, you've got two subjects there. <laughs> when, when I was taken on by Dow, I was shown, as you say, the Sensatron. Um, and it was at a point where Milton was thinking of uh, scrapping it because it was costing so much money. You know, and to them, it was scary amounts of money in the development. And I said, to, you know, I, I looked at it and understood how it worked. And 
you got to remember this time there was just the uh, Optonic, there wasn't yeah. a Dell, Kim, a Fox or anything. No. And it was, so it was miles ahead of its time. Fantastic. You know, I let the, uh, I was trying to think, I think it was Polish. It was either Polish or German, Jürgen his name, was yeah. the guy who developed it. And then I got a grasp of how it worked and thought, wow. So I said to John, I really was passionate about it and wanted to uh, manage the project. So I did. Um, and I tested the first ones. Oh, I even was responsible for the shape. You know, they the shape was stunning. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. That is still a good-looking buzzer. It was a revolutionary shape. And yeah. Interesting enough, if you look at Fox buzzers, they're very similar. They're not dissimilar to that. That's I'm a sure great shape. That was before. It's just square boxes. Yeah. Right? But anyway, um, I, our project managed it and went out and used the first ones. And the only thing I could find wrong was just a little defect. Uh, uh, they let him water. <laughs> it started going blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you used to get and static building up on them, yeah. Yeah, and I said to the middle, I said, you've got to sort the waterproof this out. And they never did. No. Which is a shame because, you know, it would have been, well, initial sales were huge, but then, of course, it felt. Word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth, because uh, you know, what it be like the internet now, the last five minutes. <laughs> um, but as I say, that's the only reason it failed, it wasn't waterproof. And then after that, along come the Fox and the Delkin. But going back, mm. um, I decided to step down from Darwa. Yeah. Because we wanted to go into Rod's place. It's going to be a conflict, and wouldn't so it? So I asked you if you would replace me as yeah. the head of Darwa. Yeah. consultancy team so in effect I was asking you to resign from Nash that's right yeah. because it would be a conflict. conflict of interest yeah so as I say I gave up jewels <laughs> and uh, you become head of Darwin but yeah I think I remember saying to you the bad news is they're going to have to use the censor oh no yeah so yeah so I ended up with a censor trump now what did impress me and, and a lot of kids really a lot of people should take this on board I then went with Darwa. Um, and there was obviously be a conflict with Nash, so I couldn't believe we were Nash anymore, and I went to Fox. But the thing is, I didn't all of a sudden fall out of Nash. We still stayed mates. And in this day and age, it's really funny. Well, I'm with Nash, I'm with Fox, I'm with Cord. I can't be still friends with somebody who's not. But I remember in those days, we still kept in touch. I still got Christmas cards from you, still got birthday cards. Yours obviously had different names of wives, mine had different names of girlfriends. <laughs> so it's pretty similar, mate. It was pretty similar. It was pretty similar, yeah. I'd say, who's the latest wife, Kev? And you'd say, who's the latest girlfriend, Jules? So we were pretty similar, but what really impressed me was we didn't fall out. I mean, you and I, that's normal for us, but in this modern era, it's not like that, is it? Well, yeah, when I... Gave you up for Darwin. I have yeah. to say, I didn't expect you to join Fox, but like you say, you know, you know, um, where would I go? You know, I would never, I would never, you know, the most important thing in life is your mates and your friends. Yeah. You know, I guess the difference then and now, John, uh, Jules, is that, you know, we was, it was fishing first, not who's bait or tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Or, and I think I touched on this in my book, that's where it's changed now. If you're not on the right bait, you know, you're you an enemy. You know, yeah, you know, and that never was that way. It, it was never that way uh, uh, for me. And I was with Fox for uh, six years, um, and it ran its course. And it was good with Fox, but it, it wasn't the family atmosphere that I had at Nash. And I remember, and I've still got the letter here, Kev, and I got this letter from you and I'd, I'd made it clear that it was time for me to step down from Fox and you wrote to me and you said, you know, we're here that you're interested in potentially joining us again. Um, I got this letter and I really found this funny because nobody else would be able to write a letter like this to me and get away with it other than Kevin Nash. Keep on blasting those little ones at Catch-22. You're catching more carp in a session than I catch in a season. And very best wishes in regards to whoever was my girlfriend at the time. And I thought, you cheeky sod, Nash, you saying that. But I thought, do you know what? True, it, it was true, mate. And yeah, we, uh, we, we, um, we got together again um, and I signed up. And that was March 1998. Mm -hmm. I think I joined you in June 1998. And here we are. 20 years on. Mm. I mean, there are not many consultants who've been with a firm for 20 years, and I doubt there will be nowadays. And when I mean consultants, I mean people who are consultants, not people who are employed, as in that's their day-to-day -day job and have no choice. You, well, you're right, but you know, the point, technically you've been with us for 30 years. Yeah, they, said, you know, you know, it's, it's quite a big thing, so we've oh, yeah. you, but to, to, you know, not to understate the fact I asked you to leave Nash, you did, I yeah. didn't want to leave Darwin. Yeah, without you know, a, a decent uh, man ending up the car. So, yeah. so, 
So you would go, but if I had asked that, you'd say, I would change. You, you wouldn't change because still back there. Yeah. And I do remember, of course, you, you were always a big thing on loyalty. And I've always been a big thing on a loyalty. Well, I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm going to butt in because I'm just about to say this was tackle. Yeah. You was always neutral, mate, and I respected your loyalty. Absolutely. You know, there wasn't many people no. who wouldn't you know, just do a tackle deal yeah. if they was on that debate at all. Yeah. But they uh, us say you're the only one that you know, had all that time with us. But uh, And I respected that. Bait. Yeah, I respected that. I was with neutral baits from the very early days. Mm -hmm. And I remember you would say you ought to get on Nash bait, Jules, but at no stage did you ever hold anything over my head saying, look, Jules, you can't be... Nash tackle and Nutribate, and I think I was probably one of the very few people. And again, I respected that. And I was with Nutribate until probably about 2013. Um, so our, our friendship developed developed from 1998 onwards, and it, it really was. I, I would come and see you quite regularly. In fact, I came to a couple of uh, wedding parties. You keep on going back to the weddings. <laughs> And me, and me 65th. Yeah, and I kept your 65th as well. So and I'm 60th. 60th, mate, not, not your 65th. Yeah. And I remember when, when I joined you in 1998, it was absolutely fantastic because I felt I'd come home. Mm. Uh, you know, there's something about the Nash family that made me feel that I'd come home. And I was with Diawa until it got to 2010. And I think with Diawa in 2010, there then became a conflict of interest there because Dow decided that they wanted to get into the luggage, the, you know, mm. they wanted to target hardcore carp fishing then. Mm. And again, I felt there was a conflict then and I stood down from Dow in 2010 mm. to be in effect full term with Nash mm. and, and joined you then, uh, you know. And I think with Nutribates, I stayed with Nutribates until two, till the end of Nutribates. Till the, till the end of Nutribates in its original mm. form. Mm. Uh, and I remember one of my funniest things that was coming down to church, you remember that? Coming up, the first time I ever fished Church Lake. I remember you. I remember you going to church, and I remember being massively impressed by your work ethic. You didn't really set your gear up. You kept it on the bow. Yeah. You just kept moving, and I thought, yeah, no, you know, no wonder you're still up there amongst the greats. You know, yeah, you smashed it that week. I, I had a good week, but we I do. Weekend, you weren't. It was. Oh no, it was, I came Thursday, and I was gone for Sunday. Um, and I do remember what did impress me was that you didn't say you have to use. Uh, Nash bait on Agils, you can use what you want. And I thought, wow, that is really impressive. A bloke who owns his own lake isn't making me use their bait. And we're catching the decade at 49.6. I was happy to catch that. But the look on your face when I caught that fish, you were more pleased for me than I was pleased for me. And I genuinely mean that. And that, that was, you know, it was almost, again, you know, people maybe don't understand yeah. it. But for me, back in those days, for somebody who you've looked up to, to be as happy for you, in fact, more happy for you than I was. That was that. That was as good as I've you got. Got a picture from. somewhere. I remember. We've got a picture of you with your arm around me. Yeah. Decade at forty nine six, and I was made up about that. For so happy that you were. And here we are now. We are some twenty years on from signing up, and still as strong as ever. Which I think in this day and age says a lot about you, me, and more particularly the company. I mean, you're still here working. I, I couldn't imagine. You're one of the few who started and is still a high profile in the company they started. I love it. You know, it might sound really outrageous, but I, I think carp fishing, development and Nash 24-7. Yeah, yeah. I go on holiday and you know, I say I'm still calling the office and you know, having them there. You know, I just have to be in touch with it. It's in my DNA. It really is carp fishing. And I've always said that about work and about you. And when I was at work, the people that impressed me most were the people who could not only do the job they wanted me to do, had done the job they wanted to me to do, and could still do it, and had a stronger work ethic than me. And when the boss sets a leadership, it's very difficult to be a slacker. Mm. Because if the boss is working harder than you, you can't be a slacker. Yeah, I've always said, I've, you know, I've always led from the front. In fact, you know, I've had a couple of right hard boys working with me in you know, London bruisers you know they still do you know I used one particular Dave I used to say you know, you know, I want to ask you to do a job I can't do it and Dave I'll always do it better you know just That's remind right. him up and get the best most out of him you know learning understanding how to motivate people is really important but yeah so it is things like first in the door and last out yeah that's the biggest motivator if the boss of the company is first in last out that is the most motivating thing ever yeah. so where's it all going to go kev where how long are you going to keep doing this 
as I say to the lads, I hope I can still wobble down on his Zimmer phone and piss you off. <laughs> uh, I do know that you know, I get tired now, you know, and so you know, I need I need my regular holidays, you know, so because you know, this morning I got up at five thirty, not coming here, but you know to arrange to get into here, you know, walk the dogs in the dark so I could get my life together and did my emails uh, before you know and the new year's coming down, so I could spend some time with you, but. So, I, I I have more time off. Yeah. But I'm never. But when I'm having that time off, I'm still, you know, still always thinking about the company. Me and Alan and Lee, my son, we talk every day. You know. So, um, there's an old saying. I, I'm, I always look at the old sayings because I think they're based on centuries, generations of you know learning, and understanding, and healthy mind, healthy body. Yeah. And, you know, I saw my mum decline because she lost her reason. Uh, to live and get out of bed, and so it's almost like it makes sense to me, you know, to keep working and thinking about innovations and that as long as I can. You're giving up smoking, haven't you? I've given up smoking. Cut back on drinking. Massive cut back on drinking. Exercise, bike in the office. From eight, from eight pints uh, to zero. Fantastic. Uh, from forty fags to zero. Um, yeah, I just suddenly thought, well, yeah. I'd like to live a lot uh, longer than what I thought I would. You know, so um, now I've got, what have we got? We've got nine grandchildren. Fantastic. On Dixie's side. And just kind of thinking, hmm, let's get to 15 or 20, you know, before, that I see before I go. Uh, as you say, I've got an exercise bike. Fantastic, um, mate. Probably, probably doing more fitness now, think about it. I walk for three miles every day, you know, and the dogs, and, Sam on the exercise bike. Fantastic mate, it's been absolutely great. It's been an absolutely fantastic 30 years mate. I'm really pleased. Another 10 mate. Another 10 mate.